Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Professor Wilson Kamami. And my YouTube channel is also called Professor Wilson Kamami. Where we have been looking, um, we have been solving mathematics. As we agreed, we are here to make mathematics simple for every student. Due to public demand, majority of students have been asking on statistics. And today we are going to look at how do we calculate those statistics. And we shall start with the measure of central tendency. But before, we know we can be able to group the data into ungrouped or grouped data. At the ungrouped data, you'll be given just low data, where you have to calculate measure of central tendency or dispersion. And in this case, my first class, we shall look at statistic of ungrouped data, where we shall look at mean. And in this case, we shall calculate mean, then we shall be able to calculate mean division, and we shall be able to calculate the coefficient of mean division. And at the mean, we shall look at various mean, method of calculating mean, and you realize we have arithmetic mean, we have geometric mean, we have harmonic mean, and all those kind of mean. So uh, I'll start by giving an example, then we shall look each, and we'll be able to calculate each. How do we calculate arithmetic mean? How do we calculate harmonic mean? How do we calculate geometric mean? Then we shall be able to compare our answer, and you'll be able to see that the mean will always be the same regardless of the method you are to use. So, let's take uh, the first example. Let's take the first example. So here is our first example. You are given this low data. You are given 6, 7, 10, 12, 14, 3, 8, and 12. And you are required to calculate mean. I will start with the first method where we calculate mean A, arithmetic mean. I will use AM in my case. How do we calculate arithmetic mean? I know if you are given AM, or what we use X bar, is equals to summation of X all over N. So in this case, you need to get the summation of X. I know this is common to everybody, how we calculate the mean. You need to calculate the sum, so you get 6 plus 7, plus 10, plus 12, plus 14, plus 3, plus 8, plus 12, all over the number of data we have. As you can see, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have 8 data. So in that case, when you calculate this one, you get, that is 13, you get 72, all over 8, and the answer will be 9. That's how we get arithmetic mean. You get the summation of this data, then all over the number, I'm at the total number of data you have been given. In this case, we have eight data. You add them, then you get the average. That's what we call arithmetic mean, average. You get the average of all this data. So that's what we call arithmetic mean. Let's look at another method. How do we calculate geometric mean and harmonic mean? We have our example two. It's the same, same example, but this time we want to calculate geometric mean. How do we calculate geometric mean? I have used GM. This is my formula. As you can see, you get the end root of the product of this data. So in this case, it is the product of this data, then you get the end root. And in my case, you know n is the number of data you have been given. So in this case, it will be equals to eighth root, eighth root of this product, six, product of six, seven, 10, 12, and 14, and three, and eight, and 12. So that when you get the product of this one, you get a root. When you get the product of this one, for those who are having a calculator, you will get 20,000, no, 20 million. I can use that one, 20 million, 321, 321, then 280. So that when you get the eighth root, eighth root of that one, you get 8.18. No, 9396. So this is geometric mean. So what you need to do in this case is you get the product of this data. 6 times 7 times 10 times 12 times 14 times 3 times 8 times 12. You get 20 million, 321,000, then 280. But in this case, you get a root. I have seen majority of students getting 8 times square root. No, it is not the square root. It is a root. Because I have eight data, it will be eight root of that number. I'm at the product of those numbers. Now you get it is 8.19. 
you can say approximately to be 8.19. That's the value you will get of geometric mean. Remember, when you calculated arithmetic mean, we got 9. Arithmetic mean, we got the value is 9. Now geometric mean, we have gotten it is 8.19. So we can proceed on how do we get the harmonic mean. So we go to the third method where we get harmonic mean. So in this case, now we are looking at how we calculate harmonic mean. You find that harmonic mean, you can calculate harmonic mean using two methods. In case you have geometric mean, where we calculated our second example, well, if you are given harmonic mean, you can, uh, you, 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 you can calculate harmonic mean uh, sorry, using geometric mean and arithmetic mean. Remember, my geometric mean was 8.19 before I allowed off, so it is that one squared over arithmetic mean, which is 9. And in that case, you'll be able to get it is 7.46. Approximately, it will be 7.46. But you can use another method where, now I'm to use this one, where I'm to get my n. My n, in this case, it is 8 all over the summation all over 1 over xi. In this case, I have my data, but in this case, I'm adding. The summation means you add 1 over x1, 1 over x2. In this case, I have 6, so it is 1 over 6. The second data, the summation, it means you add. The second one is 7, so it is 1 over 7, plus 1 over 10, plus 1 over 12, plus 1 over 14, plus 1 over 3, plus 1 over 8, plus 1 over 12. You can be able to calculate, this is another method. So where you get it is 8 all over the data. When you add this fraction, 1 over 6, 1 over 7, the reciproc of this one is 1 over 6, 1 over 7, 1 over 10, 1 over 12. You add all that one, then you can be able to calculate what we call the mean. You find that this is 1.105, 1 1.1059. 1 so when you divide with that one, you get 7.23. Uh, so you may decide to use this one to calculate harmonic mean, or you can use geometric mean. Remember the reason why we are getting a different value is because my 8.19 was, after loading off, it was 8.19 something, some other values. So you square that one over arithmetic mean, you get 7.46. But in this case now, you, get, you add the fraction. I'm a reciproc of this one. 1 over 6, 1 over 7. When you add that one, you get 1.01095. Then you divide with your 8. And your 8 is the number of data that you have been given. And that's how we calculate the harmonic mean. So from there, now, we have other methods where you can, can be able to calculate mean. We have combined mean. Maybe I will give an illustration of harmonic mean. Uh, no, no, the combined mean. We have weighted mean. I will just illustrate that, that one before I look at mean division. I will leave that one you saw, but I will highlight how do we calculate the weighted mean and how do we calculate the combined mean. So in this case now, you find that you can be asked to calculate the weighted mean. As I have said, this one I will leave for you, you calculate, but I, I will explain a little bit. So when you are asked to calculate the weighted mean, you'll be given what we call weighted factor. So if you are given weighted factor, you get the summation. Remember you have your x is 6. So you'll be taking 6 times weighted factor. Then 7 times your weighted factor. Then 10 times your weighted factor. 12 times the, your weighted factor. 14 times your weighted factor. All the way. Then you get the summation. You get the total. That will be a numerator. Then, remember you had weighted factor for this one, for this one, for this one, for this one. So in this case, you add all those weighted factor. So in this case, you have your denominator. And you can be able to get your weighted mean using that method. When it comes to combined mean, it's very simple. The word itself may, may, may explain a lot. In this case, you may be given two types of data. Maybe you are given three data here. But A of the data, you are given four, six, ten. Or maybe, maybe I can talk of 11. You have been given those three data. Then in B, you have been given four data. Three, two, five. Or maybe an, uh, we can talk of three, six, and maybe another six. If um, I, I can talk of 
that one. You are given those kind of data. So in this case, you are asked to calculate the combined mean. Remember, you can get the mean of this one, where the mean of this one will be 4 plus 6 plus 11 all over 3, and I know you get 7. You can get the mean of this one, B. Let me use B, but you have 3 plus 6 plus 5 plus 6 all over 4. You get 5. Because it will be 20 over 4, the other one will be 21 over 3. So in that case, you have two mean. So if you want to calculate the combined mean now, it will be N. What, how many data do you have? It is 3 times what is the mean? 7. Plus, how many data did you have? 4. Times what? The mean is 5. All over the sum of the data, we had 3 plus 4 data. And in that case, you get 21 plus 20 all over 7. So you get it is 41 all over 7. So in that case, it is simple. You can calculate the mean. But another, another method you can use without using combined mean. Remember, you have 7 data. So you can say the mean will be 4 plus 6 plus 11 plus 3 plus 6 plus 5 plus 6 all over how many data are those? 7. So in that case you get it is the same. 41 over 7. So in this case it's quite different but it's very simple. You can calculate the arithmetic of this one first of all. Then calculate the arithmetic mean of that one. Then you combine them. That's what you call the combined mean. Or you just can just use the little knowledge you have you have seven data, so you can add all of them, then you divide with the number of data that you have combined. In that case, they are seven. So that's how we calculate the mean. And I, I hope uh, this one is very simple to majority of you, how we calculate the mean. So now, majority of students, they might fight having some problem on how do we calculate the mean division? And how do we calculate the coefficient of mean division? So I want to look at how do we calculate the mean deviation. Then we shall look at how do we calculate the coefficient of mean deviation. So let's look at how do we calculate the mean deviation in this case. Okay, now we are looking at how we calculate the mean deviation. And the formula of calculating the mean deviation is the summation of absolute. As you can see, these are absolute of x, my x minus x bar. And in this case, this is my arithmetic mean. So I have taken my example all over n, the number of data that you have been given. I have taken the same example we had. Maybe I can arrange this one in order. 3, 6, 7, 8. Then you have 10, 12, 12, and 14. I have arranged my data in that order. So you find that how do we calculate the, the arithmetic mean? Remember how we are getting the arithmetic mean. X bar is equals to 3 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 10 plus 12 plus 12 plus 14. All over how many data do we have? 8. And in this case, we are able to get it is 72 over 8. And we are able to get the mean is 9. Arithmetic mean we are able to calculate to get 9. Now, I want to get the mean division. So as you can see, as you are guided by this formula, we need X minus X bar. So I will introduce a column where I have my x. And in this case, my x, the data is I have arranged them 3, 6, 7, 8, 10, 12, 12, and 14. So remember, my x bar, I'm my arithmetic is 9. So I need x minus x bar. I need x my, minus my x mean. So in this case, let me use xi to mean I get 3. 3 minus 9, I'll get minus 6. Then 6 minus 9, I'll get minus 3. 7 minus 9, I'll get minus 2. Then minus 1. 10 minus 9, 1. 12 minus 9, 3, 3. Then 14 minus 9, I'll be able to get 5. Remember what we are doing here. We are taking 3, which is my x, minus my arithmetic mean and in this case my arithmetic mean we have calculated and got and it's nine so we are taking three minus nine you get minus six six minus nine you get minus three all the way with each and every value of our data so remember but based on my formula i need the absolute of x i minus x bar so i need absolute of this one the absolute of negative six is six the absolute of minus three is three 2, 
one, one, three, three, five. It means that if you had a negative value, it changes to positive. That's what it means with absolute. So in that case, that's why I've used those absolute table to, man, to mean that if you get the absolute of negative six is six, negative three will be three, negative one will be one. That's how we get the absolute. But remember in my formula, I need the sum, the summation, the summation of my absolute xi minus my mean. When you add all this, you need to calculate what the summation you get. So in this case, we are having 6 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, 12. 12 plus, you get, in this case, we are getting 22. You will get 22. Because this one is 5. Those are 6, 12, 13. 13 plus 6, you get 19. You plus four, 5, you get 24. If I'm not wrong, you get 24. So now, my MD, my mean deviation, will be the summation of that one, which will be 24, all over my mean, my N. How many data do we have? Eight. So my MD will be 24, all over eight. My MD will be 24, all over eight. So in, in that case, you find that the answer will be three because you are getting 24 all over eight, and the answer you get three. This is how we calculate the mean division. The mean division, you get the x minus my arithmetic mean. You get absolute of that one. So what I did, I had my x. I subtracted nine, I got minus six. Then I, I wrote as, as absolute of that one is six. Then you got the second value, six minus mean. Absolute of that one, you get three. Then you get the summation, the total of all those data, and you find that the summation in this case we are able to calculate and got is 24. When you have 24 now, that is uh, the summation of that one, all over n. How many data do we have? They are eight. So in that case, it will be summation of that one, which is 24 all over eight, and you get the mean division is eight, is uh, three. Sorry, you get it's three. Now let's look at how do we calculate the coefficient of mean deviation, the coefficient of mean deviation. So now, on coefficient of mean deviation, it is just mean deviation over arithmetic mean. This is the formula of coefficient of mean deviation. As you can see, this is how we calculate the mean deviation. We, we have calculated mean deviation and we got is three. All over the arithmetic mean, we calculated the arithmetic mean and we got it is nine. So it will be three over nine, so you get one over three which is 0 0.333, or what you call 0 0.3, recurring. So that's how we get the coefficient of mean division. With the formula, it is mean division over arithmetic mean. You can be able to get the coefficient of mean division. That, that's the, 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 the first part of statistics, where we are able to look at how do we calculate mean with a various method. Like arithmetic, how do we calculate arithmetic mean? How do we calculate harmonic, geometric, cobalt mean, and all those, even weighted mean? So in this case, I have been able even to show how do we calculate the mean division of the same at the coefficient of mean division. So after this one now, we are going to look at how do we calculate mode, how do we calculate rage, how do we calculate the coefficient of rage? So continue watching and continue sharing so that we can be able to simplify mathematics together. We say this channel, we are here to simplify mathematics together so that we can be able to make our grade look good at the same time we are able to achieve our, our, our objective, that is to graduate and be able to, to major on the areas where we are special. That is if you are doing engineering, for those who are doing business, you find you have business statistics. So let's continue to watch more on statistics. So let's watch the next video on rage and coefficient of rage and mode of the same. Thank you.